the Parsha of Masse uh, records for us 42 places in the desert where the Jewish people encamped uh, during the 40 years that they were in the desert of Sinai. Uh, 38 years they were in one place in Kodesh. But the other two years were years of travel. Then it says, They're constantly moving. And the Torah details for us, uh, in fact, uh, the, Bal- the Bali Kriya have a, a special melody that they use uh, to describe these uh, journeys, the list of the places the Jewish people were there. So the first, all the before she may ask, what's the purpose? The Torah, there are no extra words. Everything has a purpose. So what's the purpose here of all of these names of places? And especially since uh, almost none of, none of the places are known to us. They're not identifiable to us on a map. And uh, apparently uh, after the Jewish people were there, in later generations they were not identifiable either. And even uh, Har Chorev, Har Sinai, which should be the uh, central place of uh, Jewish life, is not really identified to us. How do the Goyim have something there? But uh, we don't know where it is. We don't know what kind of mountain it was. So all of this is uh, seemingly extraneous. Now, there have been attempts uh, in the 19th century. Uh, there were expeditions of British archaeologists that came to Eretz Israel and came to the desert of Sinai. And these archaeologists were all uh, religious Christians, and they were trying through archaeology to uh, buttress what uh, is recorded for us in the Chumash and in the Tanakh, so that we knew, uh, and that was uh, uh, the pattern that lasted till uh, the state of Israel was declared. Then the Israeli archaeologists took over. The pattern of the Israeli archaeologists is to disprove everything in the Bible. <laughs> None of it occurred. And uh, they use the uh, unfortunate uh, idea that uh, no proof is negative proof. Meaning that if we didn't find it, then it didn't happen or this is not the place, or it can't be. So uh, archaeology today is uh, politically motivated. It comes from a uh, certain bias, because it's a, a guess. You're guessing on something that happened thousands of years ago, and there's no way for you to... Uh, come to any uh, realistic conclusion. So it's a theory, it's a guess. So either you accept it or you don't, but to say that it's an exact science, in my opinion, is an overstatement. It was a uh, very uh, sarcastic uh, presentation. There was a a, a Jewish uh, singer in um, the United States by the name of Theodore Bickel who at a certain period of time was quite popular. And he was, uh, he had a stage show that he presented two hours of Theodore Bigel. So most of it was song, but some of it was that he told stories. 
So he told the story about archaeology. So he said the archaeologists uh, 2,000 years from now dug up Washington, D.C. <laughs> you may not have to wait even 2,000 years. <laughs> and they saw all sorts of things there. And uh, they didn't know how to uh, name what the city was. But the, from their evidence, they called it Pound Laundry which is Washington Ton. And then he had a whole theory about laundries and that this was a place where people washed their clothes and uh, a whole theory all based on uh, something that's close to the truth but is way off the truth. So in the... Uh, in Lundus, in the uh, Chuvas of the great Rabbonim, when they wanted to say that somebody missed the mark, they said he was Kor of Lohemis. He was close to the truth, right? But if you're not on the truth itself, if it's only close to the truth, then uh, you can be led to wrong conclusions and to conclusions which are even absurd. So here we have the list of all of these places in the desert. So what was the purpose of the Torah telling us? The Torah is certainly not a book of archaeology or of uh, geography. From Forshim point out that the Torah is always Nevoah. And the Torah wanted the Jewish people to realize that, so to speak, we would be travelers in the world. And the only place uh, that's called the Menucha Venachala is Eretz Yisrael. Moshe describes it in Chumash Dvarim because Anata Loboso El Menucha Venachala. You didn't come to a place of rest, the place of inheritance, a place that you can pass on to others. The rest of the world is not Menucha Venachala. The rest of the, worst of the world is travel, going from place to place. And that's a trait that has remained within the Jewish people over all of the thousands of years. Now, many times we have been forced to go from place to place. You can go to from place to place necessarily voluntarily. But many times it's just a wanderlust within the Jewish people that we're, we're all... Uh, uh, the Gemara the describes it as Amo Pizizoi, uh, hasty people, uh, nervous people, people that fight over a parking space. Chmono uh, San, you can kill somebody because of a parking space. So that's a testimony to a nature, to, uh, to something that's in the DNA of the people. And uh, because of that, therefore, the Torah wanted to indicate to us that it's going to be lamotso ehem, lamas ehem. That there's no permanence in place regarding the story of the Jewish people. We're always going somewhere. We see that within, uh, even within countries, uh, within cities, uh, most of America's inner cities were formerly uh, Jewish cities. And uh, the Jews moved out. The Jews moved out to suburbia, and that's not far enough, so they moved again. And that's not far enough, so they moved again. They're constantly moving. They never uh, find roots in a place. And uh, that uh, was always a testament uh, to the fact that the Jews didn't feel at home. Because <laughs> the Rabboni Shalom uh, doesn't grant you that. So we're going to read uh, that the Rabboni Shalom gave us Lev Ragoz, it says in the Chumash. The Lev Ragoz is a heart that's always on edge 
tense. So the Gemara says, call it so shall bother. That was bother. The Gemara even says stronger, it says, Talmudo shall bother. That's the Talmud, the, Bi- the Babylonian Talmud is written by people who are on edge. So we think that, uh, you know, in order to write the Talmud, you have to sit in your ivory tower and be supported and don't have any worries, etc. But we see from the Talmud itself that that was not the case. And therefore, that's why the Talmud itself is called Lev Ragoz, that it's on edge. And part of the on edge is that they're constantly traveling. They're constantly going places in the world. And uh, that remains so until today. I was speaking with a <laughs> the person that runs uh, tours and uh, Pesach programs. So he said to me, in all seriousness, he ran out of places. <laughs> no place to go anymore. He can't, uh, you know. I think that's why Jews are so interested in outer space. Because <laughs> you're able to make a pace off tour to the moon. You know, something, something, you'll offer them something new. But here we, we've been everywhere. And that's one of the things that I noticed when I wrote my book. And uh, it's not only I wrote my book, I read it, which is uh, a different level of understanding. Is that we've been everywhere. Everywhere. And we haven't found we haven't found ourselves. Everywhere that we've been, we've been successful and then not successful and good and then not so good. And but uh, we ran out of places. Yeah. And uh, the Ramban mentions that that uh, Part of the idea of Achri Sayomim is that there are no more places left. You know, we did the whole world, went everywhere. He told me that uh, he wanted to do a Pesach tour to Antarctica, but it's the wrong season. (laughs) But, you know, that's the last frontier, right? So the Torah describes that for us in this week's Parsha. That's why the Torah lists all of these places. Then you went from here to here to here to here. And Rashi points out, based on the Medrash, the Mon Shom did a Sarches that 38 years were able to stay in one place, which apparently is our limit. There are no neighborhoods that last more than 38 years. Right? That's our limit. Then we have to go somewhere else. So in the overarching lesson of the Torah, when it says, Hey, le Masay b'nei Yisrael, it's not just the Masod that existed at the time of Moshe, and not just the Masos that existed when the Jewish people left Egypt, but it's an overview of us, that we have always been a traveling nation, and we're searching for the Menuch of Anachalah, and the rest of the world has not provided it for us. And that only uh, when the Rabbon Shalom restores <coughs> us here, so then, Bosem el HaMenucha vel HaNachala. HaVechananya ben HaKash, Yomer Otsa Kodi Boruch HaVazakos is Yisrael. L'fich al-chir b'lohem Torah HaMitzvah V'shemamar. HaLemoyka Pesh Mons V'shemamar. HaLemoyka Pesh Mons V'shemamar. HaLemoyka Pesh Mons V'shemamar.